Hello and welcome to another video on this channel. Recently I read a paper that talks about relating graph neural networks to causal models. I found the idea quite interesting and thought I'd upload a short video about this topic and also talk about some other resources that discuss causality in neural networks. Let's begin this video with the valid question, what is actually causality? This will not be a full causal inference introduction, but instead I will just give some intuition about the key concepts. Later I will talk about some interesting papers that connect causality with GNNs. From a statistical perspective, causality can be described with the following sentence. Relationships where an intervention in one variable contributes to a change in another variable, but not necessarily vice versa. Typical examples are that smoking causes cancer or rain causes the lawn to be wet. Because it's a cause-effect relationship, the other direction is not true. For example, cancer won't cause smoking. But in fact, it's not that easy to figure out if it's actually a causal relationship or just correlation. I'm pretty sure many of you have seen this website that shows many examples why correlation is not causation. For example, the variable math doctorates awarded highly correlates with the uranium stored at US nuclear power plants. Obviously, those two have nothing in common. Okay, so correlation can be quite misleading for finding cause and effect relationships. Correlation just tells us if variables rise and fall together. But what is then the proper way to figure out if two variables have a causal relationship? The most straightforward way to test for causality is to perform a randomized controlled experiment. A typical example is to test if some medicine helps people and for this you randomly split a group of people into two parts and give the medicine to one group and a placebo to the other group. After performing the experiment you can give a clear statement if the medicine significantly improves the health of the people. It's called randomized because you randomly split people into groups, which makes sure that there are no biases in the individual groups. The goal is to randomize out all the influential factors and only control for the actual target variable, which is if the medicine helps or not. For example, if you had a higher percentage of women in one of the groups, you would have the problem that it might be that the medicine works better for women which makes the cause-effect relationship of the medicine unclear. This type of experiment is also known as A-B testing. Of course, you can't always run an experiment and you might already have a bunch of data, so there must be other ways to test for causality on observational data. Well, the bad news is that data alone is not enough for causal inference. But if we make some assumptions, we can test for causal relationships. For this, you can use a so-called structural causal model. This is simply a graph that contains your variables and connects their causal relationships with edges. SCMs were popularized by Judea Pearl and other researchers, and they have a set of mathematical operations that allow to identify and estimate causal effects. This framework also considers the effects of other variables that might have an influence, so-called confounders. More specifically, causal identification means that you want to check if there is a causal connection at all, and causal estimation aims to measure how strong it is. In a randomized trial, you observe the causal distribution directly, whereas for purely observational data, you need to estimate it. SCMs are usually directed acyclic graphs. That means they have directed edges and no cycles in the graph. Of course, besides SCMs, there are also other ways to check for causality, but this is the most popular model. In the following, I will give you a quick introduction to causality, which is mainly based on Shaheen Taleb's blog post. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. For everyone who wants to get started with this topic, this is certainly a great place to do so. You find a link in the video description and also some other helpful resources. My initial question with SCMs was always, how do you come up with this graph structure? There are basically two modes of operation here. Causal inference and causal discovery. 
For causal inference, you have to come up with causal assumptions for your data set. This means you create this graph by yourself and then use the causal methods on the SCM to test for the strength of the causal relationships. This basically means when you fit this model, you get an estimate for the causal effects between the variables based on your data set. Effectively, a SCM is just a set of causal assumptions. A key component to test for causality is intervention. The intuition behind it is to isolate causal effects by reducing confounding factors. This is done by setting a specific value for a variable and blocking paths that influence this variable. For example, we set the value of variable b to 3. This approach is called do calculus and comes from Perl and its colleagues and it's a mathematical framework to test for causality and it mainly consists of three layers, which are called Perl's causality hierarchy. The first one is association and provides answers to the question, what if I see some value? It basically provides observational information based on the data. This is the standard setup for supervised machine learning models. The second level answers the question of what if and is implemented using these interventions and the do calculus. The basic idea is to approximate the underlying interventional distribution. For example, what if we see the value 3 for variable b, how does this change other variables? The third and most powerful level are counterfactuals. They answer the question what if we had acted differently? This gives us insights into the reasoning process. In Perl's mathematical model, there are different approaches to test these causality levels on a graph. The takeaway message is that we can test for causality using these interventions. You can think of it as conducting experiments on the graphs, just like A-B testing. There's also the famous quote by Holland that says, no causation without manipulation. Now that was the case when you use your domain knowledge plus the data to build this causal model. But what if we want to discover the causal relationships automatically for your data set? This is called causal discovery. In the end, causal discovery refers to learning the structure of this causal model based on the data. As you can imagine, this is a very difficult problem because on one hand, a lot of things need to be considered when building this graph. For example, it needs to be acyclic, but also the space of potential graph structures is huge. Additionally, a general problem is that your data might be incomplete and unobserved effects outside of the model cannot be considered. There are different algorithms for finding causal graphs and for more details around this topic, check out the causal discovery blog post in the video description. A great library to perform causal structure learning is BNLearn, which learns directed acyclic Bayesian networks that determine the direction of causality. So that was a short causality overview. To wrap it up, SCMs can be used to test for causality, and there are also algorithms to learn these graphical models based on data. If you are interested in more details, I can recommend these two books, which I've also read myself. Finally, there is a great library to do causal inference in Python called DoY, in case you are interested in some hands-on experience. Now that we know what SCMs are, let's talk about the connection with neural networks. Wouldn't it be awesome to combine the best of both worlds to have powerful models that also give insights in their causal reasoning? A couple of research papers have been published in that direction. The causal neural connection from 2021 talks about how neural networks and structural causal models are connected. At the moment, causal relationships are mainly identified with symbolic techniques like the do calculus. An interesting question is now if it's possible to also estimate causal effects with neural models. I quickly mentioned Perl's causality hierarchy at the beginning. It consists of three levels, association, intervention and counterfactual. This paper bases its investigations on this hierarchy. One key finding is that given a bunch of data which only represents the first level, so purely observational data, a neural network by itself is not able to identify causal relationships or effects of intervention.
That's why the researchers proposed the so-called neural causal model, or short NCM, which is a SCM that is based on neural nets and can be learned using gradient descent. The functions between the variables are feedforward networks here. The idea is simply to approximate the connections between the variables by learning observational, interventional and counterfactual distributions. They perform theoretical investigations of identifying and estimating causal effects with these NCMs and also evaluate the performance on observational data. The conclusion is that this model is able to approximate the causal effects identified with a SCM using observational data. Also, in situations where no causal effect is identifiable with the do calculus, the model predicts no effect as well. Based on this result, there was a follow-up research work that connected graph neural networks to causal models. The main focus for this video is the paper called Relating Graph Neural Networks to Structural Causal Models by Sechevich, Dami, Veličković and Kersting. For the following, I assume that you are familiar with graph neural networks. The basic idea is to introduce the concept of interventions in GNNs to jointly learn embeddings and causal effects. This is implemented through so-called interventional GNN layers. Those are defined by this update rule. The new embedding HI is calculated by aggregating the neighborhood messages and updating the original features with some update function. Compared to GCN or GAT, there is no big difference here. The only difference lies in the neighborhood aggregation. More specifically, the intervented neighborhood is defined like this. A neighbor node is only considered if it's not a parent node of the current nodes. But if and only if the current node is part of the variables we want to investigate. That's the same approach as blocking paths using the do calculus. By this definition, we can account for confounding factors that bias the cause-effect relationships. Just a side note, this work doesn't focus on the third level of the causality hierarchy, only the second interventional level. To give some intuition in a real-world scenario, I've built a simple example to better understand what's happening in this layer. I believe that knowledge graphs and recommender systems are a very good application for incorporating causal effects. Let's say we have some items in an online shop and want to figure out why users like the items. There's a natural causal question you can ask here, which is why did the user buy this item? Is it because he likes it or are there other confounding factors like the popularity or is it just because it's very cheap? In this case, the interventional GNN layer can be used to filter out the causal effects by applying the do operation. Now I'm not an expert in structural causal models and there are a lot of theoretical methods on these graphs, but by blocking confounding factors we are able to identify clearer causal relationships in the graphs. So I hope this helps to gain some intuition about the underlying idea. In order to actually estimate the causal effects, a variational autoencoder is used in the paper. As you might know, autoencoders are models for density estimation. That means they learn a distribution. In this case, we want to learn the interventional distribution. That is, what happens if we intervent variables. The model they use is in fact a special variant of VAEs, namely a so-called interventional variational graph autoencoder. It uses the interventional GNN layers that I've mentioned previously. I won't talk about the details of graph VAEs, but I invite you to look at another video I've uploaded about this topic. This model is optimized with a modified variant of the elbow criterion, which considers interventions for the variables of interest. The researchers test their neural causal models on several datasets. One of them is the Asia real-world dataset that contains relationships about visits to Asia and lung diseases. Their model is able to approximate the causal effects determined by do calculus applied on the structural causal model. There's a quite long appendix in the paper that discusses more results. To finish this video, I wanted to mention some more research publications that combine graph neural nets with causality. A broad research field uses causality techniques and explainability.
The paper on the left uses first principle of Granger causality on the graph structure. If the absence of edges leads to a change, it indicates that there is a causal relationship. The paper on the right isolates causal factors in the latent space of graphs. The explanations are generated with a variational autoencoder. There is also some work on causal discovery. For example, the AGGNN is able to learn a directed acyclic graph, which is the basis for structural causal models. The paper on the bottom aims to combine observational and interventional data to discover the underlying structure of the data generating process. In experiments, it's shown that the model generalizes well to unseen interventions. Overall, I think combining deep learning with causality is a very interesting research direction and I believe that it can be especially beneficial in knowledge graphs or recommender systems to filter out the causal relationships between the entities. I hope this video gave you a good overview and helped you as a starting point for using causality with neural networks. Thank you for watching and see you soon in a future video.